Well, good morning. I want to welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Pastor Bill Beckelman from Calvary Chapel Coastlands, and this is our Sunday morning service. We are uh, doing a, a remote. This is actually the sanctuary, and we will be coming into your homes uh, on our Sunday morning service. I just want you to know that we miss you. It's not the same. Um, you can actually, we know that the church is not the building. It's the people, right? And so it's not the same when the people aren't in the building. So um, the most important part uh, is you. And um, so we're glad that you could join us uh, today, this morning for church. And um, let's have a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this technology that we have. We thank you that we can come into people's living rooms and, and onto their phones and wherever they would be. And where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. And this is what this is all about, Lord. It's all about you. And so we want to commit our ways, our hearts to you, Lord. Knit our hearts together this morning as we look into your word. And uh, we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, and that is the reason why we're coming to you on Facebook Live is we've taken a couple of weeks off. We've had our team down, um, our worship team, our sound team, some of them. Uh, not everybody's had COVID. A couple people in our church uh, tested positive for that, uh, but by and large, colds and such. And so we just decided to take a couple of weeks off. And I'm, what I'm going to do, um, and this is the announcement, is I'm going to go, we're going to go take one more week off. So it'll be three weeks. We did, we did the remote, you could say, on Facebook Live. So look for us again next week on Facebook Live. And, um, and you can also, by the way, you can also look at us on YouTube. We will get this uploaded to YouTube after the fact um, so you can look on YouTube and follow us there as well. Um, but we miss you. We look forward to coming together. So that will be not next Sunday, but the following Sunday, we will gather uh, together once again here. So um, if you have your Bibles uh, this morning, would you open to the book of Ephesians and chapter 6? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to be looking at just four verses this morning. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. I'm going to read those. You can follow along in your Bibles. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So what we're going to look at in this section are, uh, let me just say this, where we have been in the past weeks in Ephesians um, is the section, we took a break because of, because of Christmas, but it was the section where the Apostle Paul's been writing to the church about the operation of, he, he, talk, he started off by saying, um, submitting one to another in the fear of God. That's uh, chapter 5, verse 21. And then he went into the home, uh, wives submitting to their husbands. He talked about husbands loving their wives and the, the harmony in the home that comes from that. And now he's going to talk about this idea of children another important part of the family. And you could probably say, and I, I thought about this, when you talk about children and the raising of children, probably the most important commodity, if I can use that term for humans, to any culture would be their children, the next generation. We talk about passing the faith on to the next generation. So they are important and getting a hold of their hearts and minds um, diabolical people um, in the world in the past even recognized this. If they could get a, a hold of the children at a young age and they could train them up in, 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 in evil things, 
they could affect a whole culture, a whole nation. And so even diabolical people have recognized that. And how much more should godly people recognize that the children are very important? And so this idea of the raising and the rearing of children. Um, so this section, we're going to talk about that this morning. I want to read to you something that happened this past week in the House of Representatives in our nation. There were what are called new house rules. Uh, to eliminate gender-specific terms, eliminating the words father, mother, son, and daughter uh, from the federal code. Um, the proposed changes reflect the views and values of the full range of our historically diverse House Democratic majority. And that was uh, written by Nancy Pelosi. Um, so there's some changes being made in the House of Representatives regarding the language that they're using to, uh, and this isn't something that's going to be at this point in time, uh, right now, this is kind of the beginning of it, where how they address one another there in the House, and, and um, they aren't allowed to use certain words. They're going to, they've replaced words. Uh, you can't use father, mother, son, daughter, um, and words that are, what are called gender specific. Um, <clears throat> and I just want to say one more thing. This happened last week as well. When the new Congress, the 117th Congress met, there was a, there is a man that is part of the Congress whose name is Emmanuel Cleaver. And he apparently is, was a, was a pastor or something with, with one particular denomination. And at the end of his opening prayer, which is strange in itself, um, he prayed to some other gods um, in his prayer. And at the end, and this is what got most of the press, I think, at the end, he said, amen and a women. And trying to be, I guess, bring in, you know, in this day and age that we're living, which is interesting enough, that's kind of contradictory to what the new house rules were, if you think about that. But I just want to focus on the, the, the craziness that's going on in our midst. So he said, amen and a women, like somehow the word amen is gender specific, you know? It means so be it. It has nothing to do with any gender. And I got thinking about this. And this guy is doing the opening prayer for the 117th Congress. And, um, and he's actually in the Congress. And I started thinking about this, amen and a women. And I guess and I thought to myself, well, I guess we can't sing hymns anymore, right? Uh, you get that? We can't sing hymns anymore. Well, uh, I'm just trying to keep it light in my, in my mind, but um, it's really uh, getting crazy, crazier. And just when you think, how much crazier can it get? It gets more crazy. Why do I say all this? Is this connected? Oh, I believe it's very much connected. Because these new, these new house rules that seek to eliminate gender, don't, don't think that it's not going to now be filtered down into the schools eventually. And it's already somewhat getting there. But that's, the, that's, that's what your children are going to be taught if they go to public schools. They're going to be taught this. And it's not going to be too long from now. Guarantee you. That's, that's, if the Lord tarries, this is, what, this is what the children are going to be taught in school. And this is, has a lot to do with what we're talking about here this morning. What we're going to talk about, basically, I, for, by and large, this is not a Sunday school class in the sense that uh, younger children, there, there'll be some children uh, in it that will listen to this message, but by and large, it's going to be grown-ups, adults. So most of what we're going to talk about is the rearing of children, um, the, um, uh, specifically the, the idea of, of, of it says... Um, how you how would you training and admonition of the Lord that idea uh, the importance of training your children to obey I'm going to pick up in verse one look what it says here and this is obviously written to children so if you're a child out there this is for you children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right now we had uh, we had a, a little song that we sang, and I don't know where it came from. If it came from Sunday school, uh, my wife had. I remember when the grandchildren were young, 
uh, we used to sing this, as I recall, and it was, <clears throat> listen and obey, that's the only way, and you'll live a long, long day. Now, I don't know if that's our, one of the Sunday school songs, but it's scripture. It's scripture, and that's, that's how you would train up children. You would sing songs to them. We use that in, as we teach the children's church songs and, and lessons in the Bible. This is a very important one, though. This the idea of children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So yes, first and foremost, Ephesians 6, 1 is written to children, talking about the, the idea of obeying your parents in the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That, that phrase, in the Lord, right? In the Lord would certainly, it, it means this, not just obey your parents if they're Christians, okay? But because being in the Lord is being a, a Christian, right? Being a born-again Christian. But the idea is obey your parents in the Lord. And if, in other words, there could be a time in a child's life where he would be called not to obey his parents. In other words, if the parents are leading, asking their children to sin. If the, if the parents were, and we know in our culture, in, in society, unfortunately this happens, there are bad parents, um, no perfect parents, but there are you know, parents that are wicked and evil and that, that would do wicked and evil things to their children and ask them to do wicked and evil things. And so, the admonition to the children is obey your parents in the Lord, because the Lord would never have children um, obey something, uh, you know, that would be sinful. And I'm talking about things that are, you know, like um, abusive parents that, that would um, do terrible things to children. I don't even want to mention the things. You, you have discernment. You understand what I'm saying. That, so that he's made it clear. You obey them in the Lord. But children are to obey their parents. And I want you to see something that's at the end of verse 1 that's losing something as the days go by. For this is right. This is right. And this is uh, the, the very basic of, of, ch of, of, of love and teaching your children is, is to tell them that the reason, because don't, don't children do this, why? from a very young age, don't they? They want to know why that they're having to do something. I remember being one of those people. Always had to ask why. It had to make sense somehow. The dots needed to connect to me to really get me to get on board with this stuff as a kid. And it, that's, um, that's important for us to communicate that to children so that they can connect their dots as much as they are able to do. I want to just say this to you, that these, these two, I'm going to talk about uh, children obey your parents, and then how the parents are to interact with their children, because there's an admonition for fathers um, and parents here not to provoke their children to wrath. But in Colossians 3.20, 3.20 and 3.21, these are um, verses that go right along. I'm just going to read Colossians 3.20 and 21. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing, to the Lord. Now, interesting, he says, in all things, as long as they're not sinful. And most of the time, this is going to be um, this is going to be the area where it's it's normally normally it is up to the children to listen to their parents. They're older. It makes perfect sense. They're older. They have more wisdom. God has given them these children to be over. And um, the end of chapter. 3 verse 20 of Colossians says, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. So in, a, in, a, in Colossians it says, it's well-pleasing to the Lord. In Ephesians it says, for this is right. See, for God is pleased when people do things that are right. You know, there is right and wrong. And one of the things that's happening in our midst, one of the things, and I, and I opened with telling you about the new house rules, one of the things that are happening in our midst is, we're living in a day when the Bible says that evil will be perceived as good and good will be perceived as evil. In other words, right and wrong, you know, will be flip-flopped in a lot of people's eyes. Well, it won't happen with Christians, of course, because we have the scriptures and we know what's right. Um, but children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the idea 
of fathers, this is Colossians 3.21, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. And Ephesians 6.1-4 is going to deal with that. Children obeying their parents and fathers not provoking their children. Those two things are talked about. Children obeying their parents and fathers not provoking their children. The two concepts dealt with in these four verses. So children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then I want you to see what it says in verse 2. And by the way, verse 2 violates the new house rules in the House of Representatives, according to their own definition, right? The new house rules. Honor your father and mother. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So two things that we see, two words that are used in verses 1 and 2. The first one is obey, and the second one is honor. Okay? Obey and honor. Let's draw a little bit of a distinction between the two, because here's... um, what is being said, there is a time when children, and that word is techna, that means young people, very young people, they need to obey their parents in the Lord for this is right. That is going to be for a period of time on the planet Earth where you're going to obey your parents. You're going to listen to what they have to say. You're going to do what they tell you to do. You're going to be under them. You're going to be submitted to them. They are going to pretty much dictate how you are going to live. Children, obey. Now, when a child gets to a certain age, um, it says in the Bible that when a man shall leave and cleave his, and he shall start his own family when a person gets married. But the idea is, this verse 2, when it says honor, that's a little bit of a different word. And that this word, honor your father and mother, this is for a lifetime. So the obeying part Someday will end. In other words, you'll get a family, you'll grow up, you'll get your own family, and then you won't be under your parents in the same way that you were when you were a child, when you were obeying them. When you go out now and and have another family, then you're going to be part of another family, and, and then things change, right? But so your relationship with your parents shall change, but then it, it, it turns into you honor your mother and father. That won't change. Now, how you honor them could, could change you. So in other words, children are to obey and to honor their parents, right? To obey your parents is to honor your parents when you're a child, right? To obey your, your parents is to honor them uh, when you're a child. But the honor continues even after you leave, leave the house and you're not obeying them per se. They're not making all your life decisions for you anymore. And... And now you're making your own decisions, but you are to still honor your parents. Um, as a grown-up, it'll, that'll never end. You'll honor your parents. And you can even, even after your parents leave the planet, you can still honor their memories, right? And not to dishonor them. Listen, there are no perfect parents. There's only one perfect father, and he's the Heavenly Father, right? Right? And I would say to you, one of the ways that you honor your parents, whether they be alive or deceased, is to not talk publicly about them negative things that they've done in the past, let's say. Um, um, that is, would be a way of honoring your parents. Um, listen, we all come from, you know, some people use the term for their families, dysfunctional family. I come from a dysfunctional family. I've got news for you. By the definition, there aren't many functional families. We're all from the Adams family. We we that we live. We're living in sin. There aren't any perfect people, so um, um, we have to be, be careful how we judge our parents. I like to just think of it this way: um, that they did the best they could with what they had. You know, they did the best they could with what they had. You know, love hopes all things. Love believes all things. In other words, when you walk in love. Um, you, you, you think the best of people, not the worst. You think the best of people. Uh, the one thing you can't know about your parents, I guess, unless you really ask them and they're openly and honest with you, is that, why did you do this? What, what were you thinking when you did this or did that or whatever the case would be? Um, um, but just think in your heart and mind that they did the best they could with what they had. 
But this idea of children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. First and foremost, again, that's written for the child to, to hear that from, from the scripture. And, but what I want to say to you this morning is um, the idea, let's, let's look at this from the other side for a moment, from another angle. And I want to impart to parents, grandparents this morning, how important it is for your children to obey you. This goes way beyond just making your life easier, because it is easier. If you're a parent and children obey, life is easier when they obey. When they do what they're told, life is so much smoother for the parent. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about just making life easy for the parent. We have to think of eternal ramifications here. The scriptures talk about the idea of, of training up a child if we, if we don't do that, we don't love them. In other words, we're, we're equipping them um, as, as, as children to, to grow up in this world. And then, and then to, they're going to step off into eternity one day. And it's important for them to obey their parents. We need to think about this. Um, a man made an observation. I don't know the man's name. And it's, uh, it's been some time ago, apparently. A man came over to, to the United States from England. And he came back from a visit to, the, to America, and he, so they were asking his observations about the different cultures, the culture that he was living in. And he said, well, I was amazed, he said, at how obedient the parents are to the children in America. Making a, you know, um, a tongue-in-cheek uh, comment on the idea of his observation of how the parents are obedient to the children. And this idea, and, and this is true, I mean, um, the idea is, if we look at, let's put it this way, parenting um, methods have changed in the years. If you were, were grown up in my, in, in when I grew up, um, and, and, and not so subtle ways, um, there was a time for example, when um, I don't ever remember my people over me, my, I was raised by my mom and my, and my grandparents, I don't ever remember them negotiating with me on things. In other words, if you do this, we'll do that, and, or things like, I'm giving you two minutes, and then one minute, I never got a timeout. They, we didn't know what a timeout was in those days, you know? Um, uh, I think we were threatened with getting a switch, but they, you know they made good on those on those uh, on those promises at times. But what I'm getting at is child rearing has changed. In other words, another way that it's changed: if I was to go out in the neighborhood and um, and do something wrong at a neighbor's house, um, there were times when the neighbor, the neighbor. Now think about this: those of you that are younger than me would be the neighbor was allowed. To, to, to give me a spank on the backside because I did something uh, in the neighborhood, that, in their house that was wrong. And, and you know what? I, did, I was petrified to go home and to find out that, that I didn't want the, my, my, my parents to find out to, that what happened up there because I'd get another one from them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get a lawsuit against this person that did that up the road. In other words, things have changed quite a bit. Um... um because what was right was right, and was wrong was wrong. And people knew, that generation knew the importance, even, even though I, that wasn't even biblical Christian upbringing. My, my family wasn't that. But they knew what was right and wrong. And they knew what worked in, in regards to raising children. And they knew the importance of the children um, being in obedience or understanding what authority is. I remember things like, and, and you can judge it if you want. I, I, I remember being raised. Now, my dad was a um, was a marine, ex marine, if there is such a thing, right? But I remember, and I know he got this from his dad, who was military as well. This is what he told us before we would go somewhere. He would tell the children, and I was the oldest, speak when you're spoken to. That's what he said to us before we went somewhere where we're going to encounter some adults. Speak when you're spoken to. And he meant it. Now, my brother, I had one brother, Mark, who, who's, 
he's a real character. And uh, he, I, I, Mark used to talk a lot. So he, <laughs> that's a whole other story. But I'm, I'm laughing, thinking about some of the things that Mark would do. It was hard for him to, to, to adhere to that one. But I want to say something to you. More than once, more than once, more than twice, people said in our presence to our parents, well, you have the most well-behaved children that we've ever seen. I heard that several times, you know, and, um, and, and there was a time when you didn't speak to adults unless they spoke to you, right? They, the adults would talk and the children could talk amongst themselves. And, and that was polite history. That was polite society. That's the way things used to work. And it used to be uh, that you addressed people as Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so by their last name as children. And that's what, that was the expected thing. That's what we, what we always did. And what that does is that shows authority. That shows that there is a difference between the elders and the, and the, and the youth. That was important to be, that was imparted to us, not just in biblical teaching, but in the culture. Listen, that is law. That, what I'm saying by this is that's lost today. We, we don't, we're not getting that teaching by and large, right? Generally speaking, today. But we need to do that as Christians because what it does is it teaches, um, it teaches authority and, and, the, and the structure that God has set up on the planet, it keeps that. So what I'm trying to say to you as parents, grandparents, it's really important that you teach your children to obey. And not just that for your, for your household, so your household will run smoothly, and it will. Here's what I would say to you. I'm gonna, I want to put the fear of God in you today, is that you will stand before Almighty God someday and answer to Him to how you trained up your children. And it won't be, He won't be interested in what college you got them into, what, what, how many credentials that they got, what kind of a job that they have, how much money they end up making, or did you buy them a house? Did you do this for them? Did you do that for them? The number one thing that he's looking at is, did you train them in the fear of me? Did you tell them about me? Did you train them that there's a God in heaven? And someday you will stand before him and give an account to him for how you lived your life. Now, obviously, um, I'm not talking about heaven and hell for, for, for parents now. If you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, and he was buried and he rose from the dead, if you believe that he paid the price for your sins, the Bible says you will be saved. So I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about when you will stand before him as a Christian even and give an account for what you did with your stewardship. Children are a blessing from the Lord, but they're on loan. I know it's, it's, a, it's, it's a misnomer to say these are my kids, right? I know we, we say that and we understand they came from your body, they, or maybe you adopted them, but they're your kids. In a sense, I understand that, but they're really not your kids. They're on loan from the Lord, right? And when, when we have a, a, a service where we dedicate children to the Lord, we're already, we're, we're, what we're saying is, Lord, we got open hands, we're giving back with, what, what are His anyway, and we're, we're acknowledging that, that, that the parents are the stewards, they're the, they're the managers of these children, they're going to raise them in the fear of the Lord, but they're giving back to God what is already His. The children belong to Him. So the importance of teaching children to obey your parents and the Lord. These are, these are lessons that will be learned in the home, and, and then um, when they go out, it will benefit them to be able to... One, one man put it this way, and he's a principal of a Christian school, and I lo- I'll never forget this. He said to children, you might as well learn to submit now, because you're going to be submitting to someone for the rest of your life. Whether it's an employer, you know, it, it, there's always someone else that's, that you're going to be submitting to. You might as well learn it now. This idea... Of, and you learn it, it's meant to be learned in the home. And they're meant, it, it's not necessarily going to be easy. This is not the easiest thing. I would say this to you. Um, if I had a hat on right now, I'd take my hat off to, to parents that are training up their children. It's got to be the hardest job in the world. And, and most of it through the years have been done by the mom, right? The father's off working, he comes home, and he's to enforce all that. But it's the moms that are doing this. You know, you've heard the term, and I'll, I, I've 
the one who rocks the cradle controls the world, the future, because they're training up the next generation. And this is a powerful place that they have, but it's, it's an important place to teach children to obey their parents in the Lord, for this is right. I don't know what you think as a parent, what the most important thing that you could give your child, what you can impart to your child, the legacy you could leave your child. And the truth of the matter is it's a legacy to train them up in the ways of the Lord. Um, as it says there, it's well-pleasing to the Lord. And you will be accountable someday to how you train. Oh, but Lord, I gave them this and I gave them that. Yeah, but did you teach them in the fear of the Lord? Just a couple of things on this. Is that kids ask a lot of questions. I remember being a question asker. And... Um, you know, it, like I said, it's hard work to sit there and go through things that you already know, but you, it helps to connect. You remember as a kid, it helps when, when the parent connects the dots to why we're doing this. And the, the truth of the matter is you're teaching them to obey parents because God said to. God said to do that. It pleases him. It's, it's, it's well-pleasing to the Lord when you obey your parents. And so you lay it out that way. God is looking at us. He cares about you, and he. it's important for you. And by the way, it says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. This is verse 2. Now, this is the fifth commandment, right? This is the fifth commandment. It's the first commandment, though, with promise, where it says, honor your father and your mother. And, and the promise is found in verse 3, that it will be two things. There's, there's a twofold promise. One, verse 3, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. And I would say to you as parents, isn't that what you want for your children? That it will be well with them, number one? Don't you want them to experience life in its fullness? Don't you? you we do. I know. I, I know the answer to it. Of course you do. You want it to be well with your children. Then the answer is then train them to be obedient to their parents and to honor their, their father and mother. And then the second thing is, that you will live long on the earth. Now, here's what I would say to you. This is a concept. This isn't 100% true. In other words, here's what I would say to you. If somebody dies young, that doesn't mean that they were disobedient to their parents. You can't draw that conclusion from that. And I'll tell you this right now. No one was more obedient to their parents than Jesus Christ, right? He was obedient, we know, to, his, to Mary and Joseph. Right? Even though he knew so much we, when he was 12 years old, right? He, they, they went on that journey, they left Jerusalem, Mary and Joseph, and they thought that Jesus, he was 12 years old, and they thought, of course, very responsible kid, I'm sure, and they thought that he was with one of the relatives in the group walking back, uh, making their 90-mile journey back, and they get into this thing, and for, they couldn't, where's Jesus? We don't know. Three days he was missing. They go back to Jerusalem, and there he is. 12 years old, he's in the temple talking to all the religious leaders. And then, and then they said, you know, of course, Mary goes, where have you been? You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Where, what, what, you scared us to death. And he said, didn't you know that I would be here, you know, in my father's house? And they didn't get it at that point in time. They didn't understand where he was coming from. But here's what I want you to, want you to see. It says that from that time forward, he submitted himself to his parents. The king of the universe. God in human flesh, 12 years old, when, when a Jewish boy became a man, he was submitting himself to his parents, how important that was. And then, not only that, by the way, but some would say, well, he was God. That's right, and he submitted himself to the Father the whole time he was on the planet. His will was to do the will, his food was to do the will of the one who sent him, so he was submitted to his earthly parents, and he certainly was submitted to his heavenly Father the whole time he was here, so he set the example, and he died at 33. That's a, that's a young death. I mean, die at 33 is very young, and uh, so he died at 33. So we can know that just because someone dies young, that doesn't mean they weren't submitting to their, to their parents. That's my point. But there's a promise to be well with you. And I know that you want that for your, for your children. Teach them to obey their parents, teach them to respect authority, teach them to honor their father and mother. It's now is the time, now is the time to teach them, and it's, it's imparted to them. 
it's not just do as I say, not as I do. That's a line that maybe you know somebody that you may have known used. That's not a very good one. That's not very biblical, by the way. Um, it certainly is true, I guess you could say to children. Um, they need to obey their parents, and, and they're not allowed to say, well, you do this, and you, you know, don't children do that at times? Well, you do it. That's when you would say, do as I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Not a very biblical thing to do, and certainly is not going to get much mileage out of a child, because remember what you're seeking to do with children is you're seeking to get them to obey in the heart, to, to truly to submit. We talked about this uh, several weeks back regarding submission. When you're talking, when you're teaching a child to submit, it's, it's a heart condition. In other words, it's something that they are going to give over on their own, not just compliance. You're not just going to teach children compliance. That is important as well. But the heart is the more important part, right? To teaching them to obey. And how you would do that is by loving them and walking them through things. And by the way, I want to say something to you. You haven't been left to your own in this endeavor. God's in this. And if, it, if he weren't, it would, be, it would be catastrophic. But God is going to honor you as you're teaching your children to honor you. God's going to do that. He's going to. He's all over this. He's been. He's given you the um, huge responsibility of training up the next generation, the next generation of Christians, you could say. But know this: that it's good for your children to obey their parents because it comes with a promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So you will um, be responsible for um, raising your children. And part of that will be, and this is something that we need to understand, um, in the day and age in which we're living, education has even changed uh, as we know it in the schools. The things that they're teaching the children are, are way beyond reading and writing and arithmetic. And, and not it, it used to be education was was to teach people to think, to teach them to think, how to form and, and live in the world and make their own decisions. And um, instead now, it's really turned into teaching them what to think. And very much education in our culture is very much an indoctrination. And that's just the way that it is. Um, and we're seeing the results of that in our culture, by the way, especially the universities, the people that they're churning out, the things that they believe. Um, um, we're churning out, by and large, a godless society, um, and, and they don't believe there's a god, and, and so on and on and on. And you know this already. I would say to you that be careful who you entrust, who you entrust to, to pour into and to form and shape the thinking of your children. Because you will be responsible before, the, before God for that, not the people that did it. They'll, they're going to face their own, their own issues, but you won't be able to blame it. Well, the school didn't. No, you're responsible for that. And I want to just say one more thing. The church is here, Sunday school and such, and the youth groups, they're here just to enforce what you're doing. They're, we're not here just to, 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 to do the training of your children. We're here just to enforce, to reinforce, I should say, what you're teaching at home. We don't have, I mean, we have them one hour a week, if that, one hour a week. That is certainly not enough to train someone up. We're just here to reinforce what you're teaching in the home. Um, we'll be accountable for that. We know that. But by and large, you're responsible for that. So teach them to honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And, the, and I just want to say this about honoring your parents. That doesn't end. That goes on until you're before the Lord. Even after your parents die, you still need to honor their memory. How did, in, in what way? Well, how you, you know, like I said, you will know because the children live with the parents. And they see a lot of maybe things they shouldn't see. You know, their parents, you know, arguing or, or, or certain things they shouldn't see. And they do see it. And they shouldn't have to. Um, but the idea is they do. Um, and I would say to you, when that happens, you can take that as an opportunity to train them. You can go to your children and tell them that what you were doing, what mommy and daddy were doing was wrong. 
you know, and we, we've, we've asked each other to forgive one another, and we're sorry that we did that in front of you. And instead of just trying to, I don't know, pretend like it didn't happen, you deal with it that way. And it's, an, it's a lesson in righteousness for them. This is how you, oh, this is how married people act. This is what they do, because there aren't any perfect families. Um, but honoring, teaching them to honor your parents, teaching them to honor you, I want to say this to you. You need to, you, you personally, the best way you can teach them to honor you is for you to honor your parents. If they're already dead, honor their memory. There should be no reason that you would tell your, your children any negative things that happened to you when you were raised. There's no, there's no really any reason to do that. Other than what that does is, is that just jades your your children's thoughts of their of their grandparents or maybe if they're dead they don't even know them or if they're alive the same thing is true right um i think because love hopes all things love believes all things there are some things that we just don't need to um uh, tell everybody about you know um bible's clear on that if we got a problem with someone go to that person Go, you got a problem with your parents. If you think that you were wronged and you get to a certain age, go to them and talk to them about it. Walk through it. And you'll, God does that because there are perceptions going on there. And you can walk through things, and God uses that for a purpose. You follow me? So we, this idea of honoring your father and mother, it's important that you teach your children to do that. But you need to do that while you don't think that you're going to teach them one thing and they're going to watch you do another thing. First of all, it's a mistake to think they're not watching. Of course you know they're watching. And they can see these things. And so the best way to teach them that is by you doing it, you walking with the Lord. And um, that it's never going to end. And I think uh, when you grow, when you get older, you, you just ask, you ask the Lord, how can I honor my, my parents in this situation? How can I honor them in that situation? So it's, there's no one set of rules for it, but you, you just ask the Lord, how do I do this, Lord? And that very fact that you were even asking him is, is pleasing to him. That pleases the Lord. So the idea is honoring your father and mother never ends. It just doesn't end. Obeying them does at a certain period of time, right, when you grow up, but honoring them never changes. Now, verse 4, verse 4 says, And you, fathers... Do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And then in Colossians, of course, in verse 23, 21, Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. And so this, he's going to give us this idea of not provoking them, not making it so they become discouraged, and children can become discouraged. Um, beaten down. One of the ways this happens is when we don't, I think when we don't, their very children are very, um, they, they ask a lot of questions, very inquisitive. And th they aren't just asking questions, although it may seem that way, they aren't just asking questions just to be asking questions. I guess maybe we go through a period, but by and large, when they ask a question, take that stuff that's from the Lord. As, as, as annoying it can be having to answer all these questions, know that that's your job at the point. And you know what? Maybe there's going to be an end where they'll finally get to the point where, okay, I don't need to ask any more questions. Listen, I know they ask a lot of questions. They don't know anything. Think about that. You have the benefit of living for these years, and you've, you've got, your, you've got your, uh, your, your hard drive filled up with all this information. They know nothing, and they're looking to you for answers. Don't you want them to come to you for these things? Would you rather them to go out in the world and ask? That's what happens, you know. When they need to learn about this, they're going to learn it. From, either, if they don't learn it from you, they're going to go out and learn it from someone else and that doesn't love them like you do. And so this idea of answering questions, God bless you, and, 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 uh, um, uh, but you can provoke them just by, by not answering and, or by um, this idea of um, teasing children. Uh, that was a big one. <laughs> my, my uncles, you know, um, they, they used to, you know, the tickling and everything else, and, and to the point where, you know, 
I don't know, back in those days, it wasn't child abuse. Maybe today it would be. But the point is, there are other ways you can, you can provoke them to wrath or, or to, to anger. Um, certainly being cruel to your children, you know, just um, not considering them. When you teach them to obey, that's always done in love, the way Jesus would teach us, the way Jesus taught his disciples, right? And, and the idea is, it's, you know what? You say, well, I don't know what to do. That's, I get you. God knows that. Make Proverbs your diet as a, as, a, as a parent. There's 31 Proverbs. Do a proverb a day, um, and, and the, whatever, whatever the day is, you can do that particular proverb for the day, and, um, and, and just read through it, and there are just oodles of things. I mean, when, if you read the book of Proverbs, it starts off by talking about a father talking to a son. It's, it's training up children and, and, and talking them to get wisdom. He's, in, he's, he's encouraging his son, David, encouraging Solomon to, to seek after wisdom, son. Seek after wisdom. People point the finger at David and say, oh, look, at he, he didn't do that good with his children. Well, look at the book of Proverbs, and I want to say something to you. He, at the very beginning, he's telling his son to find, to seek this, it's better than gold, Wisdom. Seek to be wise, son. Interestingly enough, remember this. This was done at a young age. Remember when Solomon became king. What did he do? And God commended him for it. He went before the Lord and he said, Lord, this job is way too big for me. Can you give me wisdom? That was a direct result. That request from Solomon asking God for wisdom was a direct request. The way he was raised, his father told him the importance of having wisdom. Solomon was connected to God. He knew he had the wisdom, and he knew what to ask for. Man, that was, God loved that, that he asked for wisdom. Because you didn't ask for, you didn't ask for a long life. You, you didn't ask for silver and gold. You know what? I'm going to give you wisdom. You're going to be the wisest man that ever lived next to Jesus. And then I'm going to give you all the other stuff too. You can trace that back. For those of you that said that David wasn't a good father, you can trace that back. There aren't any perfect fathers, except for one. You can trace that back to the book of Proverbs when David told his son, seek wisdom, son. Seek wisdom, son. You know what? When he grew up, he heard that. It, it penetrated. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, it's not, I don't think it's penetrating. You know, It's penetrating. Be encouraged by this. And so you can pour into them when they're, train up a child in the way he should go. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's the hope we have. <laughs> you know, the Sunday school teachers, um, you know, some would say that they don't get to really see the rewards of, their, of the fruit of their labor necessarily. You know, I mean, God bless these, these Sunday school teachers that get down there, there's children there, and they're seeking, and we teach Bible here to the kids. Bible in an appropriate way so they can understand, but God bless them. I mean, you know, my pastor used to say, if you can teach children, you can teach anyone, you know, because there's, there's so much going on in the room when you're trying to teach them about the Lord. But they will get it. They, it will penetrate. So this idea of don't, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So I would say to you, he's given us to put on, I would say to you, if you're not bringing them up, in the training, check that out, training. That's not easy, right? Training, it, it takes discipline. It takes time. It's repetition. And, um, if, if, but if you're not bringing them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord, you are provoking them. Any other way, any other thing, any other way of training them, eventually you are, you are provoking them to wrath. But he's telling them, he's making it clear. Bring them up and the training and the admonition of the Lord. And of course, that means Bible training. You, you must know your Bible and, and take these children through the Bible. Teach them um, what the things that are important. Listen, they're living in a world that you and I can't even imagine being a child today, going out and, and, and being taught the things in school that these children are being taught because, you know, you haven't been a child for a while. I'm speaking to adults now. 
there was a time in your life where everything someone told you, remember, you're just filling up the hard drive now, right? You believed it all. That's why the Bible says, you, you, when you come to the kingdom, you must come like a child. What was he saying by that? You, ch children believe everything they're told when they're at a certain age. So they're taking in all this information. But this idea of the importance of training them in the, in the, in the Lord, because they're going to they're gonna need to be able to discern all these wicked things that are being uh, taught um, you know, in the schools. And, and I, I would say to you that we're getting to the place, I mean, where I, I don't know, really pray about places you send your kids to, to learn, to, to be trained, because that's what's happening to them. They're being trained in something. And certainly in the public schools, it's not the admonition of the Lord. Um, so any other way besides training them in God's way is, is to provoke them. Um, and it says in Colossians 3.21, it says, lest they become discouraged. Yeah, you can discourage a child. And what the main, I think, job of a, of a teacher or um, of a parent is to encourage. Learning goes a lot, is a lot better when you encourage. I mean, think about this. Were you raised in such a way that, you know, you were told basically when you did something wrong, right? So you, you, you just went along and then, no, that's wrong. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because there's, a, especially when you're young, that's, 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 you've got to watch it kids so they don't hurt themselves, right? So it's, no, it's constantly you're, you're, you're having to lock things up, close doors, put locks on them, and, all, and it's no, 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 a lot of times, right? But here's what I would say to you. This idea of encouraging, give them a put on, not just what to put off, not just don't do this, don't do that, but instead, it's very important, what can they do? What can they do instead? That's what God said to us right here. To, to the adults, he said, he said, um, don't provoke them. Don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't discourage them. But then he tells you what to do instead, right? He just didn't leave it there. Don't provoke them. Don't do this. He says, but train them up in the training. He says, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Give them a put on. It, this will benefit them. Show them. Don't just tell them what they can't do. Show them what they can do. Instead, give them a put on. And, and that's so important. That's what God does with us. He doesn't just tell us, don't do this, don't do that, but do this. Live like this. This is the, the beneficial way to live. Give them something to shoot for. That's what God does with us. So, you know, we're living in evil times. That's, that's just true. We are living in evil times. And it's going to get more... Bible says it's going to wax more and more evil. I think that it's going to happen really exponentially now and really quickly now. Things are going to really uh, be on a fast forward kind of a thing now. But I want to remind you of something, a scripture that will encourage you. Romans 12, 21. As we, as we finish this, this, this study today on raising up a child, Romans 12, 21 says this, Do not be overcome by evil. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let me say that one more time. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And in the context of what we're talking about, there's a lot of evil going on in the world, and we don't combat it by, by, with more evil, but instead we overcome evil with good. And I would say regarding the next generation, they're the hope if the Lord tarries for, for this country, for, 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 for the church, that we would train them up in the way they should go. Well, in other words, we teach them to do what is right or what is good, right? By, by training up our children to do what is right, what is good, that is overcoming evil. That's overcoming evil. It's overcoming evil in your, in your own home. It's, but it, by and large, it's overcoming evil. That's the best thing that we can do 
in this to to fight this battle that we're in this spiritual battle that we are in don't lose sight of the important um call that you have on your life some people are out there well, what's got what's my call it's right where you are today parents grandparents and i think you will find that uh things are going to get crazier and crazier but remember at this at least at this point in time and i think this is going to change try to and change too but you are responsible for your children you still have the ability in this country to train up your children um in the way they should go and my encouragement is that um you would do that so to end it children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and your mother and fathers do not provoke your children to wrath but bring them up in the training and admonition of the lord now obviously as we end obviously this is what takes place in a christian home and you may be listening to this message now and say yeah that sounds good that sounds like a wow that's eye opening and everything else but here's what i would say to you the hope that we have for training up children and the fact that children helping being helped to obey is that the living god's involved in the process the living god's involved in the process is the living god involved in your processes of your life in other words i'm asking you are you a christian are you born again have you given your life to the lord jesus christ the bible says this about us all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god in other words when you are born when you come into this world you are a sinner you are born separated from god we've been talking about children that's where you can recognize this truth we call it the terrible twos they're at that age where we see this sinner is able to now manifest and 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 we can see more of what's in the heart it's out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks we see this truth born out we call it the terrible twos what we're seeing is the sin nature coming to pass we're all sinners every one of us all sin and fallen short of the glory of god the bible says that the wages of sin is death e- eternal death that means being separated from a holy god forever there's two places that a person goes when they die heaven and hell those things are taught in the bible they're real real places in the presence of god there's a fullness of joy pleasures at his right hand forevermore the other place is talked about probably more than heaven in the bible the place there is like there's an unquenchable fire where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth the bible says it calls it a lake of fire the final destination for people that reject christ reject christ the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus our lord it's a free gift think about that you can't earn it it's there it's given it's it's laid it's laid to you. it's is that as if there's a christmas tree with the present underneath with your name on it and it's all for you but until you actually take that gift to yourself and open it up and receive that gift it's it's really not yours it's got your name on it jesus christ died for your sins and you could be saved but the bible says to as many as received him to those he gives the right to be the children of god to those who believe in his name have you that's the question have you received jesus christ as your savior have you ever asked him to come into your life there was a time when he was talking to his disciples and he was saying to them who do men say that i am and they were saying well some say you're elijah the prophet some say you're john the baptist and he stopped and he said who do you say that i am And that's the question I want you to ponder this morning. Yeah, Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. He is the son of God who came to the planet to die on a cross to pay for the sins of the world. He is the savior. But is he your savior? Who do you say that he is? You can only say that he's your savior when you ask him to come into your life. I'm going to give you a chance to do that right now. You ask him to come into your life. You ask him to you humble yourself and you say, "Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my life and forgive me of my sin." Then he's to do it one time of asking Christ to come in so that you can have eternal life. 
so that you can go to heaven. So that you can have the power on earth to, to train up children in the way sh they should go. Or you have the ability to now submit to the authority that God has set up on the planet. You have the supernatural ability by knowing Christ and being empowered by Him. I'm going to give you a chance to receive Jesus Christ if you've never done that. Right now. Right now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. We're going to pray right now. I'm going to pray a twofold prayer. One is going to be for anyone that wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, if you want to be forgiven of your sins, if you want to know that if you die today, you could go to heaven. You will go to heaven if you die today. If you want that new life, Christ is calling you into the kingdom, but you must respond. You must say yes to him right now. To say, well, I'll get it later. You are saying no. It's a yes or no thing right now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and the first fold is going to be for anyone that wants to receive Christ. Prayer number one. Prayer number two is going to be for those that are already Christians, that God will work in our lives this idea of training, this idea of and being trained, and that walking in God's authority and submitting to the Lord's authority. We're going to pray that, that, that twofold prayer. Let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning, that it's true. No matter what the world thinks, no matter what the culture is saying, we know that your word is true. So we embrace your word this morning. We take it to heart this morning. And we want to pray now for anyone that has heard your good news, your, your plan for their lives to be Christians, to come into the kingdom. We want to pray for them right now, Lord, that they would make the right decision for their lives, even for their children's life. Lord, may they break the chain of, of unbelief that maybe has been in their family for years. Maybe, maybe, may they be the first ones that come to Christ. If that's you today, if you want to receive Christ as your Savior today, He's asking you to come in. Pray this prayer, mean it in your heart, and God will hear you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to, to come to the planet and to die for my sins on that cross. I believe that Jesus is who he claims to be, the Messiah, the Lamb that was slain, the one who paid for my sins. And Jesus, I'm sorry that I've sinned against you. Will you come into my life today? Be my Lord and Savior today. I ask you to come in, Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And I thank you today for your mercy and your grace for accepting me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, we pray for your church, your bride today. We pray that you would Give them grace upon grace that you would baptize them afresh in your Holy Spirit. We pray for the families that are represented here, Lord, that there would be a harmony from the, that is brought only by the fear of the Lord in a family, um, by people that are submitted to you. Lord, we pray for holy um, habits. We pray for holy households. We pray for children that are obedient. We pray for uh, children that honor their parents. And we pray for parents that don't provoke their children, Lord. And we just commit this to you. Lord, work out your will in the families, in the church, we pray. And we commit our hearts to you now. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. And... Um, He's coming soon, and we want to be ready. Amen? Amen.